This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 7, The Retreat. I can't drive this. How am I supposed to go home now? You know, sometimes a life presents a teacher when there's a lesson to be learned, Jen. Think of this totally knackered Prius Prime as your teacher. Um, that was nothing. You just said nothing in response to a very straightforward yeah. question. Namaste, fellow retreaters. Yes, this is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 7, The Retreat. I am one of your very relaxed hosts, Chris. I'm hurting for a yearning, I have to say. Uh, I am one of your other hosts, John. Welcome, fellow Defenders. And squaring out the group, I'm Derek. Uh, yes. The third of your co-hosts for uh, She Hulk podcast. Um, did Did you notice the name of of the uh, of of, of the uh, retreat area it was uh, Abamas Day? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, just Just to tie in with the Namaste. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Yeah. Woohoo! I am here. Yes, you are. Where yes. have you been? <laughs> uh, my real job is globe trotting me around the world, and I've mm-hmm. just been back from São Paulo, uh, which just sometimes just doesn't work for our recording schedule so i apologize yeah. to our fellow defenders and everyone else who listens to my, for my impeccable tunes uh my dulcet tones coming across into your ear holes and my very correct thoughts when it comes to shows about marvel always correct always on exactly <laughs> what they are writing is what i think and it comes to fruition. yeah okay just get on with it okay what, what have you got to uh confess to <laughs> and nothing. It's all good. I, I, yes. Okay. So, uh, on one of a long flight from Dublin to Sao Paulo, I watched a certain film called Ghost Rider starring Nicholas Cage. Oh, yes. Yes. Previously. The one you really loved. Which I best, really did. Yes. Best thing ever. It was. Previously, I have said that. Nostalgia is hell of a drug. Uh, um, <laughs> it really is. It really is. Yeah. I rewatch it going, oh yeah, I settled down. I like downloaded it. I was like getting in my chair. I'm like, this is going to be great. I'm going to get to re. Oh wow. Oh, oh God. The... Oh no. They really said, oh, oh. <laughs> like people must have thought I was hurting inside because I was hurting inside. Yeah. But like it was Nicholas Cage's delivery even at certain points. Mm-hmm. And like, Yes, so I apologize to my <laughs> fellow defenders and my fellow co-hosts when I have sat down going very boldly going, no, it was good. It was a good film. I continue to now reject that hypothesis that it was a good film. Uh-huh. Well, it was, that's very good. Yes. Scientific I- method. Although on the, um, <laughs> on the Nicolas Cage, it is when you watch it, you're going, is this Con Air or The Rock just with a flaming skull head? <laughs> I just really don't know. Yeah. I mean, he's a big fan as well. That's what's so dis- that's what's so disappointing. Yeah. But yes, there you go, Chris. Just to, just to show you shouldn't disagree with me. Although <laughs> yes. I love- <laughs> no, yeah. Although I still love The Rock. I watched that recently. You now, that is something that does hold up. Mm. Okay, well, I will try that. Yeah. Um, but... I will say that I will not go back to any previous other, like, early 2000s, like the X-Men or anything. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I, 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 like I said, nostalgia is hell of a drug. Let's keep those beautiful memories we have exactly where they are in the past as part of our memories. Yeah. Although we may have to go down and go back to those X-Men movies, uh, given the announcement this week that, uh, that Hugh Jackman is going to be in the MCU in the upcoming Deadpool 3. What? Been what, 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 what? Yes, yeah. yes, been confirmed now that he will come back as Wolverine in the MCU but it takes place before Logan so don't worry about that that's untouchable that's definitely <laughs> happening uh, but uh, yeah coming back as uh, as Wolverine again at the MCU so you never know we may do a retrospective on the X-Men in the future yes as long as there is less content coming out than what we have currently now because True. gentlemen you have been killing it with the mm-hmm. podcast airways so thank you for me who has managed to take a break and kind of save my voice you know uh-huh. keeping it for the good stuff in the future uh but thank you for taking a helm but 
that is enough thank yous because we are to talk about the one and only thing. She-Hulk, mm-hmm. attorney at law. The proverbial aperitif to what is coming in the rest of Q4 from Marvel. The, the, the palate cleanser, the, the comedic gold salad before you jump or bread basket, the comedic <laughs> gold bread basket before you get into your appetizer. I am bringing all the meal in there. But anyway, uh, let's talk again, about Chris, it. Really yeah. <laughs> if you are not joining us, make sure you head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com to make sure you catch each and every episode. If you have any thoughts about this or any of the shows we're covering, make sure you head on over to the website or Send your thoughts to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if you've missed this episode, uh, always you can send us in feedback to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Uh, with any of your thoughts, we'll read them out on the next episode in case you didn't get it in time. Uh, you can also join us in our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries, where we have a spoiler post up for each of the shows that we're covering at the moment, including Sandman, uh, Lord of the Rings, and She-Hulk. And She-Hulk. Those are the three. That's it. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. Right now, that is all we're covering. And then starting next week, Pennyworth on uh, on HBO Max as well. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Lots going on. Lots going on. But there's multiple directors and writers across each and every show. But Derek, do you want to tell us who gave us what with this episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law? Absolutely, yes. The executive producers for this show are Kevin Feige, <laughs> Louis, Louis Desposito, Victoria Alonso, Brad Winderbaum. <laughs> Jessica Gao and Kat Quaro. Uh, the head writer for the show is Jessica Gao. Uh, this episode was directed by Anu Valaya, who directed the last two episodes, episode five and six. And interestingly, this episode was written by Zeb Wells. Now, you may know Zeb Wells because he's been a, a comic book writer for the last 10 years for Marvel. Uh, mm-hmm. Just now, he's just taken over as the lead writer on the latest series of Amazing Spider-Man, the 60th mm-hmm. anniversary series of Spider-Man. Wow. With John Romita Jr., but also... He's been involved in Robot Chicken, the comedy mm-hmm. TV show with Zach Green for the, since 2009. And why that's interesting is one of the big things that they do on that show is take really obscure characters from the DC universe that done two specials, which Zeb Wells wrote, where they take really obscure villains and really obscure characters from the universe and make comedy about them, which is exactly what he does here in this yes. episode of She-Hulk. You're telling me you're not a massive, huge fan of every issue starring Porcupine? <laughs> there you go. Uh, who's Porcupine? Uh, yes, uh, yes. T- took some really interesting villains in here uh, to, for this for this yeah. show. Some all all of them in Marvel Comics at some point over the many many years of yep. its history, uh, and has done an interesting job pulling them into uh, live action. Yes. Definitely. John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 7, The Retreat? Sure. Jennifer Walters is on Cloud 9 after three dates with Josh, but when she wakes up, he's no longer at her apartment. After sending him a morning text, no reply comes, and Jen becomes increasingly worried and glued to her phone. Still anticipating a text from him, has he died? Is he in a ditch? Does he have a dental appointment, wedding, funeral? (laughs) She receives a call from Emil Blonsky's parole officer. He informs her that the inhibitor that stops Blonsky from turning into abomination is broken and that she has to go to his meditation retreat to check on him. Arriving at the retreat, Emil Blonsky welcomes her and they fix his malfunctioning inhibitor. But as she is leaving, two clients, Manbull and El Aguila, who are working out resentments, accidentally destroy her car forcing her to stay at the retreat until it can be towed away. The retreat lacks Wi-Fi and mobile coverage, which makes Jen fret even further as she continues to nervously wait a response from Josh. But when she finds the one bar of mobile coverage, it's in the group therapy lodge, and she becomes embroiled in a group therapy session with Blonsky, Manbull, El Aguila, Porcupine, Saracen, and surprisingly her former mugger, Wrecker, of the Wrecking Crew. After Jen is placed in the calming chair to stop her from hulking out at Rekka, she opens up to the group, where she is given the possibility that Josh has ghosted her and is convinced to delete his contact information and let go of her feelings towards him. As Walters leaves the retreat, a flashback shows that after she and Josh slept together, he secretly cloned her phone and stole a sample of her blood for the Hulk King. Well, there you have it. So, let's get into our case notes. So, order in the court. We're going to go through our top three case points for this episode with our first one. 
Let's talk about straight to it. Mm-hmm. Dating Josh. The montage, because everyone it loves was, a good yes, montage. Yes, it was a great montage. Absolutely. Lovely, upbeat pop music going on. Jigging away to that yeah. in the chair, watching it. So really enjoyed this. Yeah, now I'm in it by Haim. Really good tune. Yeah, Very but lovely. of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. despite all, everything's going really well, it's like really cute and all this kind of stuff. And you're like going... Yeah, this isn't really going to work out, is it? Because the suspicions that he could have been something from the last... You know, it was all... At least for me, cynical me was going, oh, maybe it's something... And everything was way too upbeat and poppy, which was fantastic. And I was like, I'm hoping against hope here. I know. I think maybe because I watched Heartstopper this year, which is an absolutely lovely rom-com almost over the course of the of its series, where they have this type of upbeat yeah, music exactly. with this type of stuff going on. I was so hopeful. I thought, like, well, we finally got a moment here where Jen's uh, dating this lovely guy, and they've got this. It, it's really touching. It's really fun. Uh, I just assumed everything was going to be fine. I just assumed he'd been knocked over the head by a spanner and taken by the wrecking crew. That's what I thought had happened to him. <laughs> How about yourself, yep. Chris? When I was watching it the last time, I was like. Oh, he's bad. Like it, it was just too. Right. It was too on yeah. the nose. It was just going. And then I went, no, they won't do that. They won't like. They won't make it as obvious as that to make him the bad guy. Like yeah. I thought, mm-hmm. like you said, he got like he was captured, or he fell down a well, or he <laughs> something absurd, like, like really, like, like poor Timmy O'Toole. Yeah, yes. like he he was frozen by like I I. I was going to say Frizo, but that's that's the Incredibles. But another yeah. Iceman, I can't use Iceman. Another ice blasting frozen person, like something mm-hmm. like that, where it would be like just you're like, oh well, silly, ha ha ha, at the end of the episode. Um, mm-hmm. um, I it does bring this forward in the overall remaining story like episode. So we've got like about an hour and a half, maybe probably less, probably like, say an hour ten, hour twenty. Of the, yeah, just two yeah. more episodes. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that will bring in the Hulk King, which mm-hmm. is either going to be someone completely ridiculous, or it's going to be um, the leader um, who we now know is also returning into the MCU. Um, well, a theory came in from one of our fellow ooh. defenders that I absolutely loved for who could be the Hulk King here. Um, it's uh, the, the suggestion from Harvey Locust, one of our one of our listeners, uh, says, "Is it possible that the Hulk King is the hate monger? Like, what a cool way to MCU the hate monger, this character that used to inspire oh, well, yeah. hate in people, then have yeah. them running an online forum inspiring hate great. for a character yeah. in the MCU. I love that idea. I think that's really cool. Like, I totally get the leader is supposed to be in here. We are. Uh, we have got to confirm that the leader will be coming back uh, to the MCU after." Uh, the Incredible Hulk many, many years ago. But wouldn't that be a cool way to bring in a, such an obscure character as the yeah. Hate That would have been really on point, I mm-hmm. think, for actually what they've been doing with this series so far. You know, yeah. With all the kind of social media hate and all this kind of stuff that yeah. they've kind of just been alluding to. That would have been really on point. So, yeah, I think that's a great theory. It would just to, be, to be honest. Hate monger hashtag Twitter man or something would be his new name now uh, to fit in with the with the way hate spreads around the world nowadays. Yeah, no, it has to be. It's it's going to be something silly like that. I I, I do like that idea. I I just do wonder. Like, it, there's a lot of opportunity of who it could be, but I do wonder mm-hmm. now because they're being. This is more. It's less of a thinker show, if that makes sense, and more of a comedic show. Like there has been yet to be where like they pulled the rug out from under me. Like they yeah. haven't yeah. zagged when I think they would zig, if you will. <laughs> I, I was surprised at Josh though. I think I think that did get me at the end when we had our, our flashback to what actually happened. Yeah. He got out of the bed, he cloned her phone as well, which was uh, which was interesting. Um I didn't, I didn't think there was any actual indication on screen that he took the blood, but that text message that he sent yeah. to Hulk yeah. King seems to suggest that he did take the blood. I was kind of surprised at that because we saw the the box that had been created for this new syringe that would be able to take blood from She-Hulk well, um, before. It. So I was hoping that maybe you'd see that on the side table or something to indicate that he got the blood. But it's saying, it seemed more like he cloned her phone so he could monitor what she was doing or something. But I think that's it. I mean, that needle was so massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, where would he put it on his person? And to be honest, that would wake up Jen. I'm guessing 
as Jen, they just need a normal needle, True. which would slip in mm-hmm. in the same way that a mosquito bite does, you know, yeah. where you hardly feel it. Whereas you'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, did, as, exactly. you know, there's like this pneumatic, <laughs> massive needle kind of yeah. coming towards it. So I, it was a little bit unclear, but the text message was syringe, blood, Hulk, you know, so yeah. I guess... He's got that. Thumbs up. Um, well, we did. We did get way. told that was probably what he wanted in the therapy session mm-hmm. earlier in the episode. Maybe he wants your yeah, blood. Did. Oh no, sorry. Yes. Don't worry. About it. I'm always thinking about blood. And you're like, oh god, no. That was really good. I the second time through, and it was like, oh, they, that's really good. The little Saracen blood. the vampire, yeah, because he suggests blood yeah. for everything, so you kind of miss it. But yes, he, he's actually yeah. right. In he his is suggestion. exactly right. Um, everybody else thinks that Joss has ghost, ghosted her, uh, which is really harsh. Now, I've heard about ghosting a lot. Luckily, I haven't been on the dating scene for about 16 years now, thankfully. Thanks, John. Um, <laughs> but, so I've never had to deal with ghosting. But the way it's dealt with here in the show, I must say, is really, really good because I have heard of exactly this, where there is absolutely no inclination whatsoever from the partner who's been ghosted that it's going to happen. And yeah. you see that throughout this kind of montage of their relationship. He's texting really flirty texts to her and really happy, fun stuff going on between the two of them. And then she sends a completely innocuous text and never, ever hears from him again. It's such, it's so well done because that's the experience I've heard from a lot of people who are younger than me and, I, well, and are still on the it. dating scene. It's awful. But, but it is also, it's really well done in the sense that because that opening was so upbeat, so positive, you were kind of going, well, has he, as you say, been kidnapped yeah. mm-hmm. uh, uh, by the Hulk King or the Wrecking Crew? Yeah. Has something befallen him in that way? Um, or, you know, is he part of this group that are trying to get it or he's just yeah. been hired in for it? So that was the great thing here because it just ke- it kept that tension as to... Are we suddenly going to get a ping from him mm-hmm. all the way through? Like when she got her one bar in the therapy <laughs> yeah. lodge, yeah. you're kind of like, was there just going to be a ton of bing, 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 and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. So I think that really added to just like the whole tension of what has happened to Josh or what has he done to Jen, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Exactly. That kind of thing all the way through. Exactly. And, and, you know, just the the great thing of, well, you're at a retreat, so there's no Wi-Fi, there's mm-hmm. no cell phones or cell coverage allowed, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. If you've ever been ghosted, great uh, recommendation here. Delete the number, delete the email address, delete all contact and move on. Um, they are not worth it. You're worth more than that. There you go. Uh, shall we go on to talking about our second case note, uh, the retreat itself? Yes. Let's do it. This was comedy genius. I, I, I think this was my favorite episode, and it was because of this retreat. I mean, for me, Tim Roth was just sublime. He you is know, hilarious. Whether yeah. it was him saying hello, princess, to one of his chickens. Oh, that, his favorite chicken. Yeah. As he's walking around. That, that's Lady Silkfeather, John. <laughs> well, it might be. <laughs> um, as he's walking Jen around. Uh-huh. Just the whole therapy session. The, the use of his arms and hands inviting all the different men like i just really really enjoyed tim roth uh here uh, he just made me chuckle all the way through absolutely for me it was the the, the use of the characters like mm-hmm. porcupine is like he's down there in the, in the spider totem of foes in the the gallery of rogues like mm-hmm. it was literally the only reason i know of really who he is is because recently he was in the updated Spider Woman kind of comic oh, right. book runs um, where she was pregnant and then she had her kid and he was in there and goes straight and all that type of thing um, and he's a good right. character there and you can see that here the rest of them you're like Man Bull Matador like all those jokes I'm like this Matador El uh, Guida He's not a matador just because he's Spanish and wears a matador outfit and likes to challenge bulls. He's and not a, sword. a matador, Chris. And uses a sword. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, With is, bioelectricity as yes. well. He is a swashbuckler, Chris. He knows who he is. <laughs> I, just, it was, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Just this cast of characters that they got around. The, the idea of, you know, in the similar way that we have Jen working at a law firm on superhero law, we have Emil Blonsky 
out of prison now setting up a retreat for super powered people yeah. who need uh, need to have uh, a bit of space and time to think about themselves and focus <laughs> on themselves to heal whatever problems are within them the idea that we have saracen who thinks he's a vampire <laughs> sitting in the daytime uh, asking to suck people's blood and kill them you know uh, is hilarious as well uh, i love well, what the- does he say you're, you're great jen and taste yeah. and probably really tasty. Yeah. Oh, I've gone too far. Somebody get me out of this. Somebody get me out of this. <laughs> really good. Everybody gets a really good moment. Uh, even the fight between uh, Mambo and Algrida at, at, at the beginning, where they end off destroying Jen's car, is really funny because uh, it's effectively caused because. Manbull is triggered by this guy who looks like a matador being near him. Uh, hilarious. Uh, the, co- the codependency joke that goes on throughout yeah. the episode is great fun as well. Uh, and you're the, starting to scare me now. Will you just sit on the other side of the room? Swap chairs with anybody else in this room. Get away from him. <laughs> What's it? Porcupine says to Alegrila, um, Spanish is a language, not a nationality. And he's like, have you not heard of Spain? <laughs> it was just really, really good. Yeah. And Jen had a great line after they had bashed into her car. I love where she goes, apologize to my Prius Prime with money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Really good. Really good. And all the way throughout it, exactly as you said, John and Mills Blonsky, um, just, uh, just hilarious in this chilled, yeah. relaxed, get everybody get along with each other. And I love that Jen calls about twice in the episode about the platitudes that he's giving where he just talks completely circularly (laughs) to get you back to the point you started at rather than giving you any real advice. It's just platitudes that mean absolutely nothing. But she's still a good day. It was a good way to spend her Sunday afternoon. (laughs) Well, she needed it, to be honest, because I I loved how Jen is just kind of getting more worked up, more anxious, Mm -hmm. fretting more because... She's not got the the reply text from from Josh, and then in this ideal situation of a Wi Filess cell phone coverage, you know, hole, and um, that she can't get any access, yeah. and it's kind of I love the fact, you know, in that serious point, it, it the whole therapy session mm-hmm. was just really good um because you know you have these kind of misfit superheroes i mean porcupine's suit was just outrageous <laughs> i mean I, I, whether it was comic accurate or not, yeah, I don't know. but i mean it looked <laughs> ridiculous it, <did. laughs> it was like if that's one of spider-man's spider-woman's villains mm-hmm. like how could he possibly do anything in that suit? Really, really just kind of enjoyed the ridiculousness of of the suit. Yeah, I feel like he was created in one of those times where they went through the <laughs> Encyclopedia the Britannica and we're just picking out animals uh, yeah. to go, right, can we create the rhino? Yeah, we've done rhino. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, is there an anteater that we can create as the uh, as the bad guy here? Oh, no, that's one of Ant-Man's villains. Um, so, uh, And then we get down to Porcupine. Yep. Uh, but that moment where he takes off his mask and everybody the room is like put it back on put it back on it smells like farts um, <laughs> it's very good. I, I, so the one massive reason I really enjoyed this episode especially this grouping and the scene is they now have instantaneous comic relief in some of the future MCUs just for a split mm-hmm. second so Saracen is a Blade comic book villain so right. in the Blade yeah. film if you need a like beginning part where Blade is taking out some vampires and you just need a small bit of comic relief very quickly, mm-hmm. you can just have Cyrus in there. And people will, will kind of remember him. <laughs> um, if if the next Spider-Man one, which finger crossed, John Watt comes back for and you need Spider-Man and Tom Holland throwing some quips at some really city looking supervillain, Porcupine mm-hmm. is right there now. And so on and so on. Like, they've just quickly thrown in and built together some five potential laughable supervillains that you mm-hmm. can just plug and play with kind of going forward. Um, yeah. But at the yeah. same time, you could also have them as reformed. You could do a, a show, a Disney Plus show, where they're all now trying to go straight and every episode ends <laughs> with therapy session. Like, it would be great. That'd be a fun one. That'd be a fun one. Uh, and remember, they're not a gang. Uh, make sure you tell the, uh, the pro officers <laughs> yeah. they're not a gang in a traditional sense. Just gang meaning yes. a group of people, right? <laughs> but there is one of them that we haven't talked about. We yes. haven't talked about Wrecker, um, which was a real surprise. And again, 
given what's happened on the show, where there have been a few twists and turns, uh, I know I know they haven't completely pulled the rug out from under us, as, as you said, Chris, but there have been a few twists and turns where I haven't expected where they're going with it. Um, the one that does make me pause and did make Jen majorly pause is having Wrecker in here, the person that attacked her in the street, along with the other Asgardian tooled up uh, members of the Wrecking Crew a couple of weeks ago. And suddenly you see him at the retreat here. I'm still not sure whether that's an indication that there is something else going on. Is something nefarious yeah. going on? Do we completely believe that Wrecker is completely reformed here? And the only reason he was there at that retreat was coincidence. He wasn't there because he knew Jem was going to be there or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's enough that definitely it's to keep you thinking that the Hulk King could be Emil Blonsky. There could be the abomination. And he's been running. Like, that's actually a good one. Like, if you yeah. if for the whole thing, he, you like we get to the next episode and he's even more reformed. He's again, and then the final episode is surprise. He's the most reformed ever because yes, he <laughs> fights on the good side, and then right at the last episode. Um, yeah, well, I, even just having Emil Blonsky back in the yes. series at this stage, I was like, "Oh, okay, is that suggestive of something?" Mm-hmm. You had mentioned Derek after we watched it. You know, is there something about the inhibitor that's been? Um, you know, damaged and so on. Is yeah. that genuine? So, like, I know he's, I know he's a comedy character, but he says that the reason why the uh, the inhibitor isn't working is because he got electrocuted on an electric fence. Ooh, I forgot. Kind of thing. It's like, well, hang on a second. You tried to take that yeah. off, didn't you? Like, that's that's the that's what's happened here. He's tried to take it off and then didn't take it off. What I what I wonder when you connect the whole story together, if you look from the back end of the episode to the front. What actually happened was Josh cloned her phone, which is a way of potentially tracking Jen. Three or four days later, she gets a call from Emil Blonsky's um, parole officer to say, you need to come up to me because we think he may have broken his chains and turned into the abomination. So Jen has been brought up to Emil Blonsky's retreat after um, her phone has been cloned. So is it possible that all that information was passed passed over to Abomination, and Abomination worked out a way to get Jen there with all of these other people around, all these other members of the group. Um, now, not to cast any aspersions on this interesting group of men who are kind of losery, but wouldn't they possibly be the kind of people that may be in a forum that hates She-Hulk, potentially? Um, so I'm wondering, is that what's happened here? Is it actually a plan of Emil Blonsky's to get her up there, and he is the big bad, and those, all those people in the room are all members of the site that hate Jen? There you go. That, that That's my theory for this week. Yeah. yeah. I think it's possible, and I think, as I said, it just it lends itself to that. Mm. So Emil Blonsky being the through it for me, when Wrecker came in, I was like going, I okay, know, yeah. Um, although I loved how it did turn out positive for yeah. Jen with the therapy session. I like the, the, the mid previously on, uh, bit where she goes, you don't know who this is. And I, I literally didn't because he got his hair <laughs> back. Um, and he didn't have any of the suits. And I was like, I don't, I don't really know who that is. I was like, <laughs> thank God for the previously on. I mean, mm-hmm. spot on. Very good. At least for my tiny sort of forgetful brain, but, um, <laughs> you did go on holiday in between the episodes. Well, no, so exactly. Yeah. But, um, so I I thought that was all really good, but having those there, you start to go, "Ooh, is it?" And like you say, with the flashback to Josh, the three days earlier, it is three days yeah. earlier where things have been put in motion. Yeah. Um. But I mean, Wrecker is very good at acting. I mean, after Jen comes out all sweaty from the ceremonial sweat yurt. He's kind of the all in white with a bowl of noodles and chopsticks, sort of, <laughs> you know, celebrating her sort of ceremonial sweat out, basically. Mm-hmm. So certainly able to sort of keep up the ruse, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's see, I guess. Because the other thing is still no data. So that brings well, us to case note number three, which is we have two episodes left, gentlemen and fellow mm-hmm. defenders. We've yet to see Daredevil, and they teased that right at the beginning. <laughs> More that well, they teased it in the trailer parts. Excuse me, well ahead of the the premiere. And two episodes ago, we got a a, a, a horned helmet in a box. Yeah, yeah. It has to be next episode, right? Um, I'm kind of feeling there that it might be 
literally last I scene know, of the series in a, in a little joke of, as we said before, in a little joke back to the Netflix series where the we went the entire season waiting for the suit that they teased and it was literally the oh, post credit yeah. scene of the final episode of season one. So that could be the meta joke here for for the MCU. <laughs> uh, you were waiting for Daredevil all season? Well, you got a She-Hulk TV show and here's Daredevil. He'll be back with his own 28 episode show or whatever they've committed to uh, for the MCU. But uh, yeah, we know we're getting Daredevil in the future. Uh, um, it's interesting that he'll be in he'll be in this show. It does feel like what's the place for him? We've got two half hour episodes left, so where where are they going to put him in there? He certainly wasn't a central character of the show. We didn't think he was going to be. We knew he was going to come in as a bit of a guest star, but I was expecting to see him for a few yeah. episodes. Yeah, um definitely. but at this stage I have no idea how they would make a really big, impactful story from Daredevil in this show. I think we're gonna have a bit of fun with him uh for a few minutes, let's say, in uh, in one of the episodes. I think it's going to be the next episode. I think it will be the next episode, okay. and then that will move into the final finale where he helps slightly and then is taken off the board or goes in the beginning, yeah. and then I'll see you in New York well, I- next time, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I mean, I also think that they need to reveal the big bad probably mm-hmm. in the next episode, He's and, right and there, not just at days. the end, um, <laughs> unless it is, you know... Yeah. Emil Blonsky or they're hiding in plain sight, but mm, or touch just idea. have something a bit more meaty because it is two, two episodes yep. and you want to also have that time spent with the person that, you know, has been threaded and, and hinted at through this, this series, you know, mm-hmm. right back to the wrecking crew. Yeah. Oh my God. Imagine it's the other female lawyer, Mallory. We kind of said there was a possibility because of how yeah, secretive exactly. she has been. Even everybody around her doesn't know she's been married for 12 years and has a kid. Like, that's quite yeah. significant to not know. I know some people keep their private lives separate yeah. from work lives, but it did throw a little bit of shade on her uh, last week yeah. when we when we were thinking about it. Because um, we, we were saying that it could be something because Jen got the job to head yeah. up that division because she's a superhero. Mm-hmm. She's She-Hulk. Um, and maybe there's some bitterness you know, yeah. who knows? Yeah, absolutely. But one final thing that adds to my question about whether this whole group are in on the plot to take down Jen is all of their reactions to her text message back. Now, I'm sorry, again, I haven't been in the dating scene for 15 years, but all the reactions to these blokes to a woman who went out on a date with a guy three times, slept with him for the night, and then texted the following morning going, had a good time, couldn't stop smiling, and all of them go, oh my God, you did that. Of course you're driving him away. Like, hang on a second. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. If if a guy does that to you and ignores you after you text him like that, when he's already been texting going, you're great, can't wait to see you, then the guy's the a-hole. You're not doing anything wrong yeah, there. I was thinking They're, that. All of their well. reactions make me feel like this group are potentially the people yeah. behind that website. The, they say the last text was thirsty and a, cl- a cliche. And I was kind of thinking... <laughs> I don't know if it, like, I was the same. I, I must say, I just thought that could be something I may have said at some point, you know? And I'm like, uh, I don't think I was necessarily Thursday. Thurs, Thursday? <laughs> you were Thursday, Thurs- Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was necessarily being thirsty or cliche. I've still got the text. You were definitely being thirsty. But not okay. cliche. But it was 15 years ago, so not cliche. But I, so I also okay. think I may have been drunk. <laughs> it was my Christmas yeah. day. <laughs> With that, that brings us to the end of our case notes. That historical mm-hmm. uh, insight into my co-host's uh, uh, illustrious relationship and background. Uh, <laughs> let us go into any notes for this episode. I'll kick us off. Uh, Dan Slot is, well, nodded to, credited in this with, uh, D Slot's, uh, tow service, uh, with his tow truck, uh, that is on the side as she gets in, as Jen gets into it. Um, very good. Very good. I wonder if that him driving the, driving the truck as well? No. That'd be cool. On Twitter, he <laughs> did say that the, uh, the, uh, driver is taller and better looking, uh, nice. than in real life. Uh, Good man, Dan. But he has be, he has an illustrious career. If you go onto his Twitter, he mm-hmm. his uh, Twitter uh, thread at the moment. Literally, someone pulled all of his uh, Easter eggs from across the MCU because he's apparently been name checked multiple times. Very good for all his work in the Marvel universe. So yeah, nice. he's there. Um, so quite a good one. 
Very good. Very good. Just want to give a shout out to the music for this episode. I mentioned the Haim song earlier on. Great opener for the episode. Really enjoyed the moment with Jen in the car singing Umbop by, uh, right. by Hanson <laughs> as she's really fretting all the way up there. And then suddenly the song comes on the radio. Who hasn't done that? You've got to sing along to, to Umbop. Uh, and then closing out the episode with uh, IDGAF by uh, Dua Lipa. It was a great choice um, because she's now effectively deleted uh, Josh from her phone, which is the exact purpose of that song right yeah. uh, really really good stuff um, also love that we have confirmation here that uh, the Muppets do exist in the MCU because we have a clip from the great Muppet Caper uh, Muppets well known for their parodies over the over the many many decades that they've been around I wonder will we ever ever get a Muppet parody of the MCU oh that would be point. awesome I would love love to see it they're both Disney properties they're both on Disney Plus you got to see a crossover or some kind of some kind of parody from the Muppets in the future oh, yeah. I, I they they have to they'll they 100% have to they like it's yeah. just it is the awesome. way I love if it. I could cosplay as Miss Piggy I would do love her I thought that's why you were wearing the dress tonight, John. No, I'm not wearing a dress tonight. Oh, that's only really? on Friday nights. <laughs> right. We're not recording on a Friday. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I think that's it for notes. So with that, Derek, do you defend this episode of She-Hulk? I loved this episode. This was great fun. Really, really enjoyed watching it both times uh, that we've watched it today. Um, laughed so many times at this crew of ridiculous uh, characters that they got together. And uh, again, tying it all together for this episode with uh, with Emil Blonsky's guru version <laughs> where he's tying everybody in the room to just calm down. And is there things that we've learned in this group that you can use to help Jen here rather than resorting to violence? I love, uh, I love what's going on with the mill. Really, really good. Uh, yeah, this is just a great fun episode. I'm really enjoying the series as a great, as a good sitcom in the MCU. They've really nailed it the last couple of episodes. Uh, been good fun. How about you, Chris? Do you defend this episode of She-Hulk? Absolutely. I absolutely love this. Uh, because I didn't, uh, wasn't here for the last episode. Yes. Uh, I'm continuing to defend this show. It is a, a parody, a palate cleanser, a sorbet mm-hmm. between courses. Um, and it's just so much fun. I'm just, it's what I need at the moment. It is good humor. It is, uh, well done. It's characters I love. Um, the narrative design on the, each of the episodes where you kind of do have a good thread line going through. And okay, it, Josh was exactly who we thought it was, but that's fine. And Not will, me, I'm such a romantic. Exactly, <laughs> I thought she'd end up with love, um, yes. but no, because she's due to be good in Daredevil. She will fall in love with Matt Murdock, and then we're good. <laughs> um, I just want to see where it goes. I like that's what I'm enjoying, and every every Thursday, I'm happy just to wake up and get a good thirty minute, twenty minute kind of slice of comedic genius so with that yes i defend john do you defend this episode of she hulk episode seven the retreat yeah really do i give this a uh, four and a half ceremonial sweat yurt out <laughs> of five and um, i just found this really funny i love the concept mm-hmm. loved all the off-kilter uh uh superheroes super villains the um you know it was the the gorgeousness of jen and josh but you you know you really felt the anxiety the anxiousness the with jen what's happened to josh you know is josh the bad guy that we were kind of theorizing about previous episode or is he actually genuine and you know that kind of went through all the way through and i really enjoyed that loved the the therapy session loved uh, the just Tim Roth being superb, you know, mm-hmm. um, in, in this kind of lighter role. But like we discussed, just the intrigue about is this actually genuine? A bit mm-hmm. like with Josh, is this genuine what's happening here? Or is this part of the whole King's sort of modus operandi? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I thought this was superb. Uh, Give this four and a half ceremonial sweat yurts out of five. Ooh, that's going to be smelly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you hurting for a yurting yet? Oh, I need a ceremonial <laughs> sweat yurt, I think. Fantastic. But do you get a ceremonial drink with that sweat lodge? And if not, should we just go to the pub? 
Yes, I yeah, think we should. Fellow defenders, fellow quizzers, it is the bar exam, also known as a pub quiz mm. from the legalese. And uh, yes, it is episode seven, question seven. What is the name of Emil Blonsky's wellness retreat? Oh, very good. Ooh. Interesting. It's not a bomb nasty. No. No, it. I will repeat the question. What is the name of Emil Blonsky's wellness retreat? The actual retreat. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Send in all the answers to the questions for the She Hulk uh, bar exam at the end of the season. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with all of the answers at the end of the season. Uh, the questions are all available on our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. Just pop on there. There's a. a uh, she Hulk bar exam tile on there, and you click on it, and it gives you all the questions for uh, this pub quiz. Excellent stuff. Uh, let us move into our feedback mm-hmm. section then. Absolutely. We've got an email in from Coffee and Vodka about his thoughts in this episode. He says, Greetings, fellow done and dumped defenders. <laughs> Even with a predictable ending, come on, his name was Josh. This is how a half hour show is made. Three interconnected plots, Jen's bloodletting, revisiting a meal, and romantic abandonment issues in a single feel good location. Josh getting what he wanted and leaving Jen behind, tied into the blood sample plot. The general untrustworthy guy vibe laced through the whole series and served a spot on allegory for romantic to entanglement gone bad. Guri Blonsky was incredibly convincing, even though it's pretty clear there was no inhibitor malfunction. The interplay between the residents of the retreat seemed natural and fun. This was easily the most rewatchable of all the episodes so far, so much so that I couldn't have cared less about No Daredevil five minutes into it. And she was right. I totally forgotten about Crowbar Guy. Good call, Jen. <laughs> five porcupinions and man bullhorns out of five. Peace and take care, coffee and vodka. Thanks so much, Coffee and Vodka. I, I totally agree with you. This, um, for me, is definitely as well one of the most rewatchable episodes. It came together so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, as you say, the interplay at uh, the wellness retreat as well. So, yeah, I just really enjoyed this this episode. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with you, Coffee and Vodka. Yeah, really good. Great fun. Great fun episode. How about yourself, Chris? Yeah, no, completely agree. Um, for the interplay of the residents, as I said, like, it's just, like, I, I would happily see them in their own, either on their own show, and it's, <laughs> or it's just that kind of, them all trying to go straight, and yeah. then a, a therapy bit at the end. Like, there was a show, a procedural show called Mum, I think it is, where they're in AA or something. Uh, it's with Anna Ferris, I think, and it's just, um, her going to AA at the end, at the beginning and the end of each episode kind no, of thing, right. and it's them sitting around, and, like it's all about them, so you could do that. Like you could mm-hmm. seriously just do that comedic show with them trying to go straight their story, and it's them talking about it in therapy. It'd be great fun. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like yes. it. Yeah. Thanks, Coffee and Vodka. Thanks, Coffee and Vodka. Over on Facebook, Harvey Locus had this to say: "So far, this has been my favorite episode. With the ending of the last episode and the beginning of this one, we all saw the Hulk King or Hate Monger reveal coming, right?" But balancing it with the group therapy was a great way to show that despite the ass hats out there, it is possible for guys to be good and even change their ways. I hope those that are hate watching it can glean something from this. Thank you so much, Harvey. Yeah, we, if they're hate watching it, let them hate watch it. We don't talk about the hate watching, but we mm-hmm. do talk, as you said, we've already talked about the hate monger. And I, again, yeah, the balancing of the group therapy was fun. It's like, Having this one thread of this Hulk King, which has actually gone all the way back to what episode three, or when or episode two, when the Wrecking Crew tried to take her blood, um, is that mm. early? Like it's just been this small thread through. Now, yeah, if they did this for a twenty-four episode season, like old CW, and you had this small <laughs> thread through, that's a whole other story. Nice. But this it is really tight, is. Yeah. concise, and it's just dropping it through with a bit of fun. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Harvey. And loving your theory on hate monger. Yeah, definitely. Like that, like definitely. Uh, also, John Daniel says, I'm writing this in real time while watching and my heart is breaking for Jen while she waits for a text back. 
Ugh, I'm so glad I don't have to date anymore because it was hard enough waiting for an email. I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> As a long-suffering tall person, CGI She-Hulk hitting her head in Emil's patio ceiling made me laugh out loud. <laughs> Mechanical bull, this is a funny episode. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, this has turned into a support group episode. I can't believe that Ali Thug is here. They are being awful to Jen. Strike that. Now they're ready to kill Josh for Jen. <laughs> Laughing out loud. This is a roller coaster. Oh no, Jen, don't trust them. Holy crap, was that a red herring? The tow truck is here. Oh no, Josh is breaking our collective hearts. He's in on it. Okay, I'm going to watch this again. That was a tremendous episode. Five porcupine suits out of five. But I'm sad. See you next week. John from Chicago. Fantastic. A live Johnning. Yes, exactly. Week. I like it. Excellent stuff, John. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, John. And I think, yeah, you've picked up the potential for this group to be a red herring. Mm. Might be nice on the outside, but possibly are all in it together. And we're not a gang. We're not a gang. But we're not a gang. Exactly. <laughs> so who knows? And much Maybe like, they just are. Much like <laughs> herring, smoked herring. Not that good mm. either. Ugh. Oh, it's lovely smoked herring. Oh, smoked herring. No, Yummy. Kipper. Yeah. Nah. Smoke herring, smoked haddock, smoked mackerel. Better than sushi. Mm. Ah, take those vile words out of your mouth <laughs> while I go wash his mouth out with soap. We're going to bring this podcast to an end. Thank you so much to everyone for their feedback. Remember, if you want to make give us your feedback for this episode or any of the previous or even your thoughts of the series as a whole, you can email it to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or you can email it over to facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries where we're going to have our spoiler post for each episode and probably a wrap-up one too. If you like what you hear, make sure you are subscribed on each and every kind of platform as well you can support us by going to patreon.com slash tv podcast industries where you can support us for a monthly amount whatever you choose and we are very appreciative thank you very much or if you want to do a one-off donation to help keep the lights on and uh, basically feed the guy something better than smoked herring um (laughs) smoked salmon oh yeah you can just move them up to smoked salmon let's move them up there you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash tvpi yes and you can do a one-off coffee donation but you can also share the podcast because sharing the podcast is what gentlemen it sharing is the love. it is sharing the love and sharing the therapy session absolutely yes. <laughs> absolutely we've had a lot of therapy sessions over the last couple of weeks <laughs> yes. um all caught up on she hulk now uh all caught up on lord of the rings the rings of power now the yes. brand new episode coming out later on this week um Almost finished our coverage of the excellent series Sandman. Yes. Got one more episode to cover of that, the special bonus episode. Uh, and then we are just down to our two shows every week. Yep. Uh, She-Hulk for the next two weeks and uh, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power for the next uh, next three weeks. Yeah. And we are and kicking off. DC's Pennyworth uh, coming from next week on HBO Max. Yes. yes. But. Looking, back to getting back, looking forward to getting back into the uh, the world of Gotham. Yes. We will be back next week with the next episode, episode eight of She-Hulk. Thank you so much, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you again next time. Yes, breathe in, fellow defenders. It has been a pleasure speaking and uh, relaxing with you in this uh, podcast session Mm -hmm. with you. Uh, Remember, in the meantime, keep watching, keep listening, and keep defending. Now breathe out. God, did they hold their breaths that long? Oh, dear. (laughs) Hope everybody's okay. Bye. See you in the sweat yet. Bye. (laughs) Bye.